Hello again. In the last episode, we looked at local port forwarding. Today, let's look at remote port forwarding. Forwarding via SSH tunnels is incredibly useful to temporarily punch a hole into your firewall, to expose local services remotely or vice versa. Let's start Tmux and look at a few slides. This extract from the SSH man pages shows you how to configure remote port forwarding. Here's an example. The user instructs her SSH client to connect to example.com. She uses the minus R option to create a remote port forwarding. Specifically, if a request is received on port 9999 on the remote host, example.com, it is tunneled over the existing SSH connection to the machine of the SSH client and from there forwarded to Wikipedia on port 80. Let us test it. With the connection established, let's open a new Tmux pane and hit example.com on port 9999. Grabbing for wiki, this looks like we hit the right server. Nice. Let us close the SSH connection and try something else. There is an index.html file in the current directory. We can serve it up with Python. The HTTP module creates the server on port 8000 by default. We can send the server process to the background and then test it with the Lynx browser. That looks good. It is time to create another remote tunnel, one that listens on example.com's 9999 and redirects to our Python server on localhost 8000. Example.com 9999 should now be served by our local process. Perfect. That is all for this installment. Next time we're going to look at dynamic port forwarding. With dynamic port forwarding, you create a SOX proxy that allows you to, for example, route your browser's traffic through. Please like and subscribe and I see you next time. Thank you and bye bye.